chapter number 23. And it came to pass a long time after that the Lord had given rest unto Israel from all their enemies round about that Joshua waxed old and stricken in age. Now I'm going to preach a little bit as I go along here while I'm reading you the scripture. I'll say to you it's going to be a great day, one of these days, when God gives us rest from all our enemies. Amen. When the Lord gives us rest from all our enemies. Now that won't be until we get to heaven. But there's coming a day when God is going to give us rest, a complete rest from our enemies. Now, how many of you have battled the forces of hell this week? Raise your hand. Everybody in here, if you're living for the Lord at all, uh, you're fighting the forces of hell. Now, if you're doing what the devil wants you to do, you're having a pretty easy life right now, but it's, it's going to change. Because the devil's going to get tired of that after a while. And he'll make you miserable one way or the other. And best, best to just go ahead and serve the Lord. Amen. Let God fight the battles for you. And enjoy life. Amen. But there's coming a day when we're going to have rest from all of our troubles and all of our battles and all of our sorrows. And, and Joshua's old and stricken in age. And I believe that he knows that he's not going to be long for this world. So he gathers uh, verse 2, And Joshua called all of Israel and for their elders, and for their heads, and for their judges, and for their officers, and said unto them, I am old and stricken in age. And ye have seen all that the Lord your God hath done unto you all these, all these nations because of you. For the Lord your God is he that hath fought for you. God will fight your battle. God will help you when you run into trouble and discouragement. And this God will fight your battles if we'll let him. It's easier for him to do it than it is for us to try. Give it to the Lord and let God fight your battles. I'll tell you something, friend. Uh, you'll have a much, much easier time of it when you leave it in the hands of the Lord. Verse 4, Behold, I have divided unto you by lot these nations that remain, to be an inheritance for your tribes from Jordan with all the nations that I have cut off even into the great sea westward. The Lord your God, he shall expel them from before you <coughs> and drive them from out of your sight and ye shall possess their land as the Lord your God hath promised unto you. Be ye therefore very courageous to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, that ye turn not aside uh, therefrom to the right hand nor to the left. Father, we thank you for the word of God this morning. Help us, I pray. Lord, I could go home today saying it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. Lord, I could be encouraged today, Lord, and, uh, by the reading of the word of God. And Lord, by your comfort and by your help and by your promises. I pray right now, God, you'd help us, Lord, as we gather around these scriptures for a little while. And Lord, as we'd rightly divide the word of truth, and God help us to say nothing contrary to thy will, but all we say will be to the glory of God. And Lord, in these last days that we're standing, Lord, help us to stand therefore. God, help us to be courageous. Lord, help us, God, that we'd raise some children, some teenagers, encourage some adults, God, that they would be courageous in these last days of wicked and evil that we're living in. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Be, be ye therefore very courageous to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses. Now, at this time in Joshua's life, it's amazing to me how the Word of God has been there for, well, the Word of God's always been, but it has been in the hands of man we know since this verse was written. The law of Moses was, on, was pinned down. Not only just the, the commandments, but the law of Moses was pinned down. And he said, don't forget the law of Moses. Don't forget to keep uh, those things which are in and do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses. So the word of God always has been, it always will be, and God's people should always keep it. Amen. And friend, today we're living in a day of lawlessness. We're living in a day of, of terror. We're living in a day that is... Very discouraging if we look at what's going on in the world today. You look on any news media and you find very little good news. 
You find a lot of, of what's going on that's evil in the world, but you find not very much good news. But I'll tell you today, I've got good news. Amen? I've got good news and that God is still in control. He's got everything in hand. Nothing is out of, out of His hand today. Now, there's a lot that has gone on in the last couple of months that, has, that is slowly but surely changing the course of, of society in America. We're headed in, very, in the direction where all the evil is good and all the good is evil. Did you ever think you would see it in your day where people such as you and I are facing, are going to, and we, you know, are going to face persecution simply because we want to live our lives and serve the God of heaven. But we're living in that day. It's upon us, friend. It's not coming. It's here. When people are mocking the word of God and, and where in, in one place I read this week, and I don't want to be repulsive, but I want to tell you what a, degra a, a, a degraded society we're living in where they were, where they were uh, using the Word of God as toilet paper. Now how degrading is that? That's repulsive. But they were doing that, showing that they did not respect the Word of God. But I'll tell you something. I want to tell you something. What's in this book still in this book, and it's not changed. And what the Word of God tells me about such people that do such as that, does God love them? Yes, He does. Did He die for them? Yes, He did. But He will not tolerate forever the dragging of His name and His Word through the mud. And when God brings wrath and vengeance upon this earth, it is not going to be a pretty sight. When we go that we would... You know, I, I didn't plan none of this. I'm just going to tell you, this is just what come along. When we go to decorating the White House with the colors of the gays in the land, we're living in a fearful world. When we deny the rights of, of godly people such as you and I to do what we want to do and how we want to do it around the Word of God, and when, we, when the world tells us that we're nothing but bigots and that we're you know, that we're prejudiced against all of that. I'm telling you, we want to live and serve the Lord, don't we? That's all we want to do is live and serve the Lord and lift up His name and praise Him. And yet, the ridicule against such people as you and I is getting worse and worse. When the Word of God is being changed from the Word of God... Have you got that on your... Have you got that on your... You showed me a while ago. My wife's got something I didn't know if I'd use it or not, but it's going to fit right in here for just a little bit since the uh, direction's going. In the, in, the, in the day when the Word of God is being perverted by people and where they change the Word of God, now I've got, and I just let me tell you right now, I've got no use for any translation of Scripture but the King James Bible. You mark me off as a, as a, as a uh, whatever you want to what mark me off as, but I'm telling you, it stood... All the major revivals that have come in our world have come through the preaching and the teaching of my King James Bible and everything else that takes away from this, I have no use for it. Say amen or oh me or I'm not coming back one to two. But that's my stand on the Word of God. And I listen, I believe we're living in such days when people better find out something they're going to hold on to and dig in deeply. Amen? Now, the Word of God is, where, is our standard. The Word of God is what we're to live by. If we have any courage in anything today, we must have courage in the Word of God and by the Word of God and through the Word of God. Let me have that just a minute. <clears throat> Liberals create a homosexual version of the Bible that won't offend gays and they call it the Queen James Version. And this, is a, this is a verse of scripture that's in the King James Bible. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. It is an abomination. That verse is in the scripture. The Queen James Version 
Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind in the temple of Molech. It is an abomination. Now that's just one. That's, that was all I could take before I about threw up in the pulpit. Look, when we go to perverting scripture, God's word's true. What God's word is, says is God's word is. And friend, I'm telling you, when we go to perverting the scripture and degrading the word of God, now that, uh, I don't remember where that was at, but, but when we go to doing that in this world, this world ain't long. This world is not wrong. I think it was uh, one evangelist said this, they better install lightning rods on the White House because it's about to strike. Look, friend, I'm just doing, saying all this to tell you this. We're living in a wicked world. Now, that's not all the picture I can paint, but that's all I'm going to do for right this minute. Being it is that we're living in such a corrupt and wicked world, how many of you now want to serve the Lord? I'm not going to ask for hands raised. You raise if you want to. Now, you're going to face opposition in this world. Now, how many of you want to serve the Lord? You're going to face, you, I, hey, I don't know that it ain't going to come to the place where I'm dragged off in handcuffs and my head put on a chopping block. But God helping me by the grace of God, I, I still want to serve the Lord and do the will of the Lord and not back down from what the teachings of the Word of God are. And that's why Joshua gathers all the people around and he centers his thought upon verse number 6 which says, Be ye therefore very courageous to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses. Friend, I'm telling you, you as a Christian and me as a Christian, and if you're here today and you don't know Jesus, you've never been saved, you better get right with God before it's too late. Now, am I against... The homosexual crowd, I'm against their lifestyle. But I'll tell you something, I love them. Somebody asked me, what if they come to your church? They're very welcome to come and sit down and listen to the preaching of the Word of God. What's not going to happen here is I'm not going to be marrying any of them. And it's not going to happen in this church as long as I'm pastor by anybody else. You say, why did you feel the need to say that? Because I need to make it clear and it needs to be made known what we feel. We've got, a, we've got an amendment to our bylaws that we're going to vote on. We'll put that out this morning. We, it's already enacted. And it is, we're already covered because everybody uh, you know, said we needed to do something. We'll take that up at the next business meeting. But I'll tell you something. If the world don't know where we stand, what good is it? What good is it? I'll tell you something, friend. We're living in such a day when we better take a stand for, for something or we're going to fall for everything. But do I love the sinner? Yes, I do. Do I love their sin? No, I don't. And I love that crowd. I, there's some that I work with, and, and I have nothing against them. And one of them said, I'm going to come sit down on the front seat of your church. I said, you're welcome. Come right on, as long as you listen to me. And not try to stir up trouble. You're welcome as rainwater. You say, preacher, you just opened the door wide open. Somebody don't tell them the gospel if the Spirit of God never has... Uh, you know, has room to convict them, they're going to die and go to hell. And I but listen, God said he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We're living in the last days. We're living in the last days. If you've got something you need to do for the Lord, you better get on with the program and do it because you ain't got long left. Jesus is coming soon. Let me give you just a few things. That was the introduction, by the way. In, in these encouraging words in verse number 6, we should learn the lesson that we need as believers to have the courage to live the Word of God. If we're a teacher, to teach the Word of God. If it's a preacher, to preach the Word of God. And that's going to take some courage. Now, when I first started, when God first called me to preach, and it still does take courage to get behind the pulpit, but it really took a lot of courage for me. I was kind of bashful and backward and didn't know what to do, and so I didn't do a whole lot. But God finally got me around, amen, 
and I'm not near as bashful. I always get nervous, but I'm not near as bashful as I used to be. But I'll tell you something. It takes courage to do anything that deals with the true Word of God. You Bible school teachers this week, man, don't hedge around nothing if it's in the Word of God. Don't hedge around anything in telling the truth of the Word of God and the truth of Scripture. Amen. If someone asks you, what does it mean if I die and don't have Jesus? Don't you hedge around and say, well, you're going to a bad place. You tell them what the Word of God says, except, to be man, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And all those that don't accept Jesus are lost without God. It thrill my soul to see some people get saved here this week in Bible school. Amen? But it's going to take the courage of the teachers to tell the truth. It's going to take the courage of you to live right before a, uh, before a holy God and do what's right before a holy God and have courage that you might have the power of God upon you as you teach these young folk and these adults. As we're living in the last days in the wicked world, we need, number one, we need to be courageous in our godly living. Godly living means that you live as God wants you to live. Godly living means that you're living in such a way that if God was sitting beside you, which He is, by the way, that you wouldn't be ashamed of Him to see what you're doing. Amen. Or oh me, one way or the other. If we live godly lives, we'll be the happiest people on planet Earth, but trying to straddle the fence and live partly for the world and partly for the Lord never works out just right. Because the world sees you as a, as a hypocrite, God's people see you as a backslider, and you see yourself as miserable. It's not worth it. Preacher, how do you know that? Because I tried it. Foolish young man that I was, I gave it a try. Foolish young man that I was, I thought I could live both ways and enjoy both sides of life, and guess what? I was miserable. Everybody around me was miserable. But one day God got a hold of him and said, Son, you're going to have to make your choice. You're going to either have to have the courage to live and serve me or I'm going to put you in a place where you won't ever be able to serve me again. I'd rather just be dead be where I couldn't love and live and serve the Lord. Then God put me in a place, put me on a shelf somewhere and never take me down to use me again because of my rebellion against him. And I determined, Lord, I'd rather have Jesus than anything. Amen? I'd rather have your blessings than everything the world's got to offer. We have to be courageous in our godly living for the Lord. Are you living in the last days? Hard times are coming upon the believer. Hard times are coming upon those that will stand for the truth of the Word of God. Have you got what it takes? Or are you going to fall by the wayside and give in to the pleasures of the world and the pleasures of sin and live like the world wants you to do instead of how God wants you to live? Be courageous. Be courageous in the days that we're living of this ungodly world. As a godly person, as a godly people, we must have the courage to let God live through us. And that's the only way it'll happen is so we let God do it. Because we in the flesh are weak, but through the Spirit of God we have all power. Then we need, number two, to be courageous in living after the teachings of the Bible. Now this Word of God says what it means, and it means what it says. If you've got a question about something in life, you can find it in the answers in the page of the Word of God. You find the answer there, it's there. Listen, we not only have to have the courage to claim the Word of God, but we've got to have the courage to live of the Word of God and to proclaim the Word of God. We've got to have that kind of courage. Now, there's been times in my life where my courage has been tested, other than, other than spiritually speaking. I'll give you a couple examples. And I'm not the most courageous person in the world. If you don't believe that, turn a mouse loose on me and I'll either, somebody's going to get hurt. Now the snake, you know, I pick it up and throw it out the door. Get him a little furry mouse scurrying around my feet and there's going to be some action taking place and you better run. 
But on one occasion, my wife and I were, we hadn't been married long, and we were sti still living in South Carolina, and I, going down the road, minding my own business, if you can believe that. I was minding my own business. My wife and I had been riding down the road in the 70 model Mustang, 302. Anyway, we got down about the South Carolina state line on 25, and there was a big car pulled up beside me. And it had a carload of undesirables looking at me. And one of those undesirables had a undesirable gun. The pistol had to be that long. Pointing to my face. Most of me to pull over. Man, I turned to jello. But then I thought of my sweet wife sitting there beside me, and I thought, there ain't no way I'm stopping this car for you. Gun or no gun. And so I hit the gas. 302. 1970 Mustang. Well, it took them a while to catch up. But uh, they caught up. Big long Cadillac. 421. Gas line that big around. They caught up with me. And they got up beside me again. I'm just running about 80 is all I'm running. They caught up with me and they start doing this number. I thought, y'all are serious. So without thinking, well, I was thinking, but without thinking real hard, they done that, and I slammed on the brake, just like out of a movie, son. They went in front of me and zoomed like that and almost wrecked at the guardrail, and then I hit the gas, and they were not catch me that time. So I got to where their headlights weren't visible, and I, I turned my lights off, and I hit the side of the road and backed up in the thicket. You know, you know. I thought, well, this will be our last stand if they find me. I'm going to have to try to dig out of here real quick. They went by me just flying. I've never been so happy to see some uh, car pass me in all my life. Now look, I could have done one or two things. I could have pulled over and no telling what happened. But uh, listen, somehow from somewhere I got enough courage to say, I ain't going to do this and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure out some way. And it's only God that kept us from maybe not even being here tonight because of that situation. I called the highway patrol, of course, they never done anything because they couldn't catch him. Got a 421. But anyway, you know, and, 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 and I thought after that, I'll never be caught in that situation again. And I've never been caught in that situation again where I wasn't able to do something. That night I could have done nothing if I'd have gotten stopped. But now, I, you know, I'll take care of business, Pastor. You gotta be, you gotta have some courage to live in this day. Listen, what's it going to, what's going to, now, that's something that you can either, you can do or you can't do, you can fight it or you can't fight it. But what you going to do when maybe the government comes knocking on your door? Uh, yes. Are you a Christian? The moment of truth is right then. Do you stand around and say, well, uh, I go to church. Do you do that? Or do you say, by the help of God. Yes, and you're going to have to have courage to do this because I know how the devil is. Or are you going to say, yes, I'm a Christian? And they're going to say, well, you're going to have to come with us. What are you going to do? Or are you going to say, well, no, I'm really not a Christian? Or are you going to go with them? Now, I ain't got that far along, so I can't answer that question. But I'm not going to back down and say I'm not a Christian. Whether I go along with them without kicking and fighting and screaming, that probably ain't going to happen either. But I'm God helping me. I want to have some courage, friend. You're going to have to have courage. You say, preacher, that ain't never going to happen. It was never going to happen that we allow gays to be married in the country. It's never going to happen that we not allow have the Bible and prayer in school. But it's all happened. Hey, friend, you, listen, we can't be the frog boiling in the pot because that water's about boiling now. we got to wake up and get out of that pot. Amen. we got to get some courage. we got to get some backbone about it. we got to be stirred by the Word of God and moved by the Word of God so that we can enjoy our last days here on this earth, even in amongst persecution. 
Y'all look at me. Don't look at me like a calf looking at a new gate. Hey, Amen. I'm telling you the truth. You better get, hey, we better be courageous. I've got little kids in the church this morning that I don't want to see, up grow, see them growing up in the environment that they're going to have to grow up in. Hey, Amen. God's people still got time. If all of God's people would stand up together and turn on, hey, amen, some would have to give. Hey, amen. But we're as long as we live, we better have courage. I love these little young ones with all my heart. I've got grandkids. I love with all my heart. And all I can do is say, God, give them courage to live in these days. God, give me courage as a preacher to tell them, tell them what's going to happen. God, help these parents to, to raise these children to be courageous in the things of the Lord. Be courageous. We're living in a... In, uh, to, we need to be courageous in living after the teachings of the Word of God. Whatever God says is sin is sin. Whatever He says is not is not. So we live our lives according to the teachings of the Word of God. I can read you list after list of things in the Scripture that God deems that are wrong in, in our world and... and uh, and even the world of uh, so-called Christian folks live in sin and it doesn't bother them. Now, should I go to naming a list? There's a long list. Now, I'm not going to do it. You know what it is if there's sin in your life. I don't have to tell you what it is. The Holy Spirit's already done that, and you can know. And if God give it to me, I'd sure shell it out. But I'm not going to today because God hadn't given it to me. If you're living in sin, you know what the sin is. You know what to do to get rid of it. Confess. We confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We need to be courageous to stand against the teaching or, or for the teaching of the Word of God and against Satan and against sin and against the evil powers of this world. Satan, I'm no match for, so the Lord does that. Sin, I'm no match for, so the Lord gives me help. The evil powers of this world, amen, far greater than I am, but I know God's greater than they are, amen. So we stand. We stand with the armor of God, having our loins girt about with the truth of the word of God, the helmet of salvation, the whole armor of God, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, praying always with all prayer and supplication letting our request be made known unto God. Then the last, day, the last thing, we live in this world and we need to be courageous in standing up for our godly conviction. You know what's the matter with a lot of folks today? They have no conviction against evil. They have no convictions against sin. A lot of preachers have no conviction against sin. Everything's all right. Everything's okay. Whatever you want to do, if it makes you feel good, just go ahead and do it. Let me tell you something. There's pleasure in sin. There's pleasure in sin. But it's only for a minute. Only for a short time. I'll tell you something today, friend. If you're living in sin... You better repent. Confess it to God. Get it under the blood. Because the day's coming when you're going to need the courage and the help of the Lord. And you can't have that if sin's reigning in your life. If you're here today and you're lost without God, you don't know Jesus. I want to tell you something. Jesus loves you. Let me tell you something else. I love you. Let me tell you another thing. His church loves you. We love you enough that we'll tell you that if, you, if you're not born again, if you don't get saved, you're going to die and go to hell for eternity without God. I love you that much. The church loves you that much. You know, God's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Now, I'm hard on sin, but I'm not so hard on the sinner because God loves... Hey, I told somebody last night they were telling me about somebody that was living such and such a way. And I said, look, if it wasn't for the grace of God, I would be there. 
That could very well be me if it wasn't for the grace of God. Out in the world, out in sin, out in evil, out in wickedness, on my way to hell without God. But God, for his great love wherewith he loved me, sent his son to die. Old country preacher stood up and preached to me the word of God and salvation, and I got saved by the grace of God. Oh, my friend today, if you're here lost, wouldn't you come to know the Savior today? If you're here and you're backslid on God, if you're here and you're backslid on God, wouldn't you come and let the Lord put you back in fellowship with Him? Father, we thank you, Lord, for the Word of God this morning. God, we thank you, Lord, for your help and your leadership. God, I plead the blood of Jesus right now. If there's someone here that's lost, God, please, will this be the day that they come to know you? Will this be the hour, Father, that they turn to you before it's too late? or else they perish and go to hell. Lord, if there's a child of God here that's just been half-heartedly serving thee, and Lord, just at their convenience, God, they'll do you will. I pray, God, you get a hold of their heart. Help me, God. Lord, give me courage. Lord, help me to be strong. Lord, help me to live right, walk right, talk right, do thy will in Jesus' name. Amen. While every head's bowed, no one looking around.